Hey guys, welcome to Z School Live. Uh, today we're going to be hanging out with uh, one of our newest members of our ambassador animal program here at the zoo. This here is Hank, and he is a red footed tortoise. Now, Hank here is in fact a tortoise, um, and he's pretty indicative of a tortoise because he's got this big rounded domed shell and it allows him to stay pretty safe from predators in the wild. Now, Hank here, he is a red-footed tortoise. Now, the type, he's called a red-footed tortoise because he has some uh, red scales on his arms and on his body. And some tortoises might be a little more colorful than others. Hank's here aren't super bright, um, but he does in fact have those red scales on his arms. Um, and that is where they get their name, the red-footed tortoise. Now, these guys are native to South America, and they can be found anywhere from Panama all the way down to Argentina. They can also be found on the Caribbean islands, um, places like Barbados, and they can be found um, in a wide variety of habitats, but these guys mostly live in forested areas. So Hank here really thrives on areas that have high humidity um, and where it's nice and shaded from the sun. Now, these guys are primarily herbivores, but they can be opportunistic omnivores, meaning that they're gonna eat just about anything that they can come across. They might scavenge some small animal material and they might eat some invertebrates, things like insects and bugs. Um, might be uh, something that he might enjoy eating. Now, these guys are going to spend most of their days on the forest floor scavenging around for plant material. They're going to be mostly trying to eat things um, like grasses and plants. Oh, and it looks like he's getting some yummy cantaloupe today, which is pretty exciting. He might also be eating some berries, some fruits, um, as well as some insects or maybe even some mushrooms and some fungus. So these guys are going to be eating a wide variety of foods, but mostly plant material. Hank here has a wide variety of favorite foods that he enjoys here at the zoo, most of which being um, certain kinds of fruits, and, and we're going to actually chat a little bit about that later. Now, these guys can live over 50 years old. Hank here is actually a turning 26 years old on April 10th. That's actually his birthday. Um, and so Hank here is going to be turning uh, 26, but like we said, these guys can live to be over 50. Uh, so Hank has quite a lot of life left in him, which is pretty exciting. Now he is about fully grown. These guys max out at about a foot to 13 inches long um, from their carapace length. Right, and when we're talking about turtles and tortoises, their uppermost shell here is called their carapace, and their bottom shell underneath is actually called their plastron. And we can kind of see Hank's belly here is concave, um, which means that it's almost bowl shaped. Um, and that's how one of the ways that we can tell that our, our friend Hank here is a male tortoise. Now, Hank, um, these guys are going to spend most of their days kind of roaming around. So he is constantly on the move. That is what we're going to see here on Zoo School today. He's going to be cruising around, maybe looking for some snacks. Um, and tortoises will also spend a lot of time looking for a partner, right? They're going to spend a lot of time moving around um, their habitat, looking for a buddy or a partner. Now these guys, um, the males actually can make clucking sounds. Uh, to, uh, to help attract females and to find more friends. Now these guys, uh, the boys do actually get a little bit larger than the females, um, but only by a few inches. And these guys also, one of my favorite things about them is they can actually identify different tortoises and people um, by making small head movements. Um, and that's how they interact with each other and identify other tortoises. Now these guys are can lay upwards of about five to 15 eggs. The girls are gonna dig a little bit of a hole um, on, on, on the forest floor and lay those eggs. And those eggs are gonna hatch after 150 days underneath the forest floor. Now, one of the interesting things about turtles and tortoises is that the temperature of their nest actually depends 
trends actually makes up kind of what the majority of the, the eggs are going to hatch out to be. So for example, um, if a nest is really, really warm, if it's a warm year and those tortoises lay their eggs, and it actually is the same for sea turtles too, um, that nest, if it's extra warm, there's actually going to be a lot more female turtles or female tortoises born during that time. Whereas if it's a slightly cooler nest, we'll see more males born out of that clutch or out of that nest. So it's something really important, especially um, as the planet warms up a little bit, that a lot of scientists have to take into consideration because these guys, we're going to have a lot more girl tortoise and turtles out and about if the, if the temperature keeps warming and our friends here keep laying eggs. Now, these guys are actually uh, considered not evaluated um, in their conservation status. So these guys, uh, unfortunately, their population hasn't been evaluated. So we don't really know how many red-footed tortoises there are in the world. Now, unfortunately, lots of turtles and tortoises are considered vulnerable for a few different reasons. So turtles and tortoises all over the globe are considered vulnerable um, due to mostly being taken out of the wild for the pet trade and for people who harvest their shells. Um, as you can see, Hank here has got a pretty gnarly, pretty cool shell, um, but unfortunately, a lot of people think that tortoise shells are really cool also, but unfortunately, they just want the shell and not the whole turtle. So for these guys, um, unfortunately, people are their biggest predator, being taken out of the wild for one reason or the other, and sometimes it's for pets. Um, but, uh, so they are considered vulnerable. Thankfully, they're not doing too bad. Um, a lot of scientists think that they're doing okay, but they are still considered um, a threat um, or threatened by things like habitat loss and by uh, uh, the pet trade as well. Now, uh, today, we're also going to be chatting a little bit um, about some of Hank's favorite foods. So right now his trainer, Kara, is giving him um, some cantaloupe today. And uh, Kara, uh, say hi. Hi, hi. Kara. Say, well, thanks for joining us on Zoo School today. So now I have a question. What is Hank's most favorite food, would you say? So absolutely, hands down, his favorite food is going to be blackberries. Um, mm -hmm. My assumption is he really likes the stuff that has a whole lot of juice to it. And I don't know whether it's just because he actually likes that it's really juicy or because he likes to make a huge mess of his face. <laughs> um, he really likes to dribble all the juices all over the place. He looks a little funny after training sometimes. Um, and then this close second would be cantaloupe, which is what I'm giving him today. And so, I mean, you said this is for training. So what kinds of things um, does Hank do for his training sessions? So, um, we actually just started beginning training with him recently. Uh, so his first thing that we actually started working on, and I did bring it here today, um, I will let you know that he seems very distracted, so we're not gonna try it in this new area for him. But what I have with me here, this is called a target stick. Uh, the purpose of it is that I would present it to him and he would walk up and boop the end of the target with his nose. And the whole point of teaching him something like this is that it gets us to have him voluntarily get from point A to point B. For example, if I need him to come out of his holding space or go into his holding space, a target stick is a really great way to get him to do it on his own, but he also gets a nice little snack at the end when he does it accurately. Um, aside from that, we are gonna be starting on station training soon, and that basically means that I'm just gonna have a small area and it's gonna kinda look a little bit like grass, that I'll just point at and he'll know that that's where I want him to go and he will head there and then hopefully just stay there for me and that's gonna help us with voluntary medical, medical exams as well so that way he stays nice and put. So I can actually just give one quick try to see if he is interested in targeting, but uh, bear with me here, he is very distracted so if he does not do it, I would not be surprised. Hank, do you wanna target? So sometimes it takes him a second, he's definitely looking at it, and boop, good boy. So he's going to get a nice little blueberry at the end of that so he can squish it up. If we had blackberries, you'd be able to see all the juices pour out of his face. That's pretty awesome stuff. Uh, 
these guys can be pretty smart, right? A lot of times people don't always think about reptiles, like our friend Hank here, having a lot of smarts. Um, but these guys are capable of learning and training just like a lot of other animals too. So that was really awesome to see. Thanks for showing us that. Absolutely. So what do you think is your like most favorite part of working with Hank? Well, so my favorite part would definitely be, I think he has a little bit of dog in him. And the reason I say that is he does like to sit on my lap. Um, and that's not very common for tortoises, at least from what I know of. Uh, but sometimes when we're in the middle of training, uh, since I'm much taller than him, I have to get down on his level on the ground. And if I'm targeting with him, even if I'm holding the stick far away from my body, every now and then he'll just get a sudden urge and decide to come over and climb up on my lap instead. Oh my gosh, so, that's pretty crazy. I, yeah. I, I've heard of lap dogs, but I don't think I've ever heard of a lap tortoise before. That's pretty awesome. So, that's, that's pretty cute. Now... I know, I have heard, now that he's a little bit of a lap dog, this tortoise, does he also like scratches? Absolutely, so that's what I'm doing right now. So most people think that just because there's a shell there that they're not gonna be able to feel this, but he actually really enjoys a nice scratch, usually on the hind end. Um, so every now and then, after a good training session, or because he also likes to take nice warm baths, Every now and then when he climbs up out of that bath, I'll go and give him some scratches for a little bit. And you can really tell he gets into it when he starts wiggling his back back and forth. Um, so another thing that we have so that he can give himself scratches whenever he would like is right over here, we have his scratching post. Now this gives him the ability to scratch both his sides and the top at the same time without me having to be there. So we can see if he's interested in going through it. He is very distracted from the new surroundings right now, so I wouldn't be surprised. And there we go, taking a turn. <laughs> of course, once I mention it, he's like, no thanks. But yeah, he absolutely does love his hind end scratch real nice. It's a, a big reward for him. That's pretty awesome. Um, so reptiles, they require an awful lot of care, right? So it looks like Hank here not, he needs not only just food and you know water, but he also needs some training to keep that mind sharp and even some love, right? Some mm -hmm. attention to help make sure that he stays uh, nice and healthy uh, mentally and physically. And now, are there any other things that we provide for Hank that's a little different than you would maybe provide for a cat or a dog? Absolutely. So Hank here, he does rely a lot on humidity and heat. So one of the ways that we make sure that he gets plenty of both of those things is one, for the humidity, we have misters set up in his, um, in his holding space. So that way, every now and then, they go off on a timer. It keeps the area nice and moist and helps with the humidity, which also then in turn helps with his respiratory system. Um, aside from that, uh, they do like to stay nice and warm. So aside from warm baths that he gets every single day, he also has uh, a, a nice heating bench. So basically it's just a big structure that's tall enough for him to fit his entire body under. And it emits a lot of heat directly down onto his cypress mulch which then that keeps him nice and toasty. That's pretty awesome. Well, this has been a lot of fun meeting Hank and learning all about him. I wonder, do you guys have any questions as you're watching Zoo School Live today? Is there anything you guys would like to know about Hank? So it looks like Chris is asking, um, is he gonna be on exhibit in the zoo? So where is Hank gonna live uh, eventually? Absolutely. So Hank here is actually going to be one of our newest members of the Birds of Paradise exhibit. Uh, so he's going to be where all the parrots, the sun conures, and uh, the larger parrots actually also lived. So that walkthrough exhibit is going to be his new home. That's pretty exciting. Kara, what's your favorite thing about working with Hank? <laughs> if you can narrow it down. Well, aside from the fact that he does like to climb on my lap, I really think that he has a whole lot of personality and he definitely really likes attention, which I can appreciate because I get on that same level sometimes. Uh, but he definitely, he's a spunky little man, even though he's about halfway through his life. He's got a whole lot of energy. He definitely likes to explore. And even if you think he's explored the whole room, 
just kidding, because he'll find somewhere else to go crawl underneath and check out everything around him. Someone would like to know, why does his shell look lumpy? Is that a natural thing, or is that part of his species? Yeah, so these species, um, these guys, it can be a few different things. So a turtle shell can grow in different ways for different reasons. Now, Hank is a pretty new addition to our zoo, um, and we think that there's a good chance that he just had maybe a little bit too much a little bit too much protein maybe when he was younger that helped him grow extra uh, extra scales or scoots, which are those scales on top of his shell. Um, so it is common for these guys if they eat a little too many meatballs or a little too many uh, bugs for them to get grow kind of a lumpier shell. Um, but he's still pretty healthy. Um, it does depend. There's a lot of different reasons why their shell can grow bumpy like that. Um, ideally, um, he would have a flatter shell, um, but there's all different kinds of things. Chances are he just got a little too much of one nutrient that helped his, sh his shell grow extra when he was younger. Great, and does he have any animal friends at the zoo yet, or is he gonna make some animal friends, hopefully? Yeah, so he sure does. Um, so besides Kara being his trainer, I don't know, Kara, what would you say? I think he, he's met, I think he's been hanging out with one of the chickens um, next door, and I think he's really excited to meet some of the parrots up at the birdhouse, but he hasn't quite met them yet, so we'll have to see how, uh, what great of friends they make eventually. Great. So that looks like all our questions for today, guys. All right, awesome stuff. Well, thanks so much for your questions, guys. And don't forget that if you have more and we didn't get a chance to answer your question yet, or if you think of one later, please always feel free to comment on this video later and we'll try our best to get back on and to double check and to make sure we answer as many of your questions as we can. Um, but thanks so much for tuning in today on Zoo School Live, guys. It's such a great uh, pleasure to have you guys joining us and meeting Hank. It was his first time on Zoo School Live, so this is really exciting. Um, that he did such a great job, and he even uh, showed us his targeting skills, which was so cool. So guys, thanks again for joining us on Zoo School Live. Remember, Zoo School Live is every Tuesday and Thursday, um, coming here live from the zoo. Um, and then don't forget to come visit us too. We are open um, Wednesday through Sunday, so be sure to come visit, and maybe we'll see Hank when the weather gets a little bit warmer. Thanks so much, guys, for hanging out today. Have a great rest of your day.